Today on Exploring Florida, we've got a special show planned for you. We're going to go to the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico to look at an artificial reef. I'm Chris Temke. Thanks for joining me today. Now, you may wonder why anyone would want to go diving in the Gulf. Well, I'm going to introduce you to a group that not only enjoys recreational diving, but they've also found a way to help marine scientists while they have quite a bit of fun. My guest today is Frank Cassidy. He's the head of the Volunteer Scientific Research Dive Team and also Steve Boutel. He's a marine biologist with the Lee County Natural Resources Management Department. And along with a group of volunteers from VSR, we're going to go explore an artificial reef that's made from part of the materials that used to be the Edison Bridge. Now the groups are in the boat and they're ready to go. So I'm going to join them. Stay with me. Portions of the production costs for exploring Florida are provided by the Lely Development Corporation. Environmentally sensitive neighbors in Southwest Florida's building industry since 1964. Laley is proud to bring Exploring Florida to public television. this morning? Well, we're going to go out to J.C. Reef, about eight and a half nautical miles off the lighthouse. Now this is, a, when you say J.C. Reef, this is an artificial reef, right? Yes, it is. Okay, these are the uh, reefs that the, the county has put in, right. Steve? Right, this is one of 13 reef sites we're working on now, and uh, this particular one is a site that was used for about 20 years by various groups, and now the county's taken over uh, management of this particular site. What kind of stuff is out there? Uh, we'll see a couple different things. It's concrete material, but two different types. Uh, some are junction pipe or uh, junction boxes, and the others are culvert pipes. But some of the stuff also has, has gotten out there recently. I know you've got a big project going on with the, Ed, the old Edison Bridge. Uh, That's right. Is any of that material at the JC site? Just a very little bit of the rubble that they had from that. Uh, most of that material is larger, and we've got a special site dedicated for that one. What is the county uh, managing these reefs for? I, I, fishing, I would assume, right? That's exactly right. Uh, next time you go and buy a fishing lure or something, flip it over, look on the back of the package. Chances are there will be a little fish in a symbol there. It says Federal Aid in Sport Fish Restoration. And that's part of the program we're working with that provides some funds to the county uh, to build these reefs. It helps to uh, provide a fishing habitat where there wasn't one previously. Oh, yeah, it gives people a chance to hook up with some of the big ones. I assume there's That's some right. big fish out there, right? Yeah, hopefully we'll see some nice fish. Yeah. Now, VSR's involvement is this. You guys are, are helping Steve. Is that the yeah. arrangement? Yeah, the, the idea of the VSR team is to uh, train recreational scuba divers to assist scientists like Steve to uh, complete and round off the uh, offshore reef management program. Okay. And uh, how many people you got uh, doing this kind of work? Doing this type of work, we have about 75 divers involved that have been trained and that are assisting with the uh, reef program. Must be a big help to you. It's a tremendous help because really my limitation is time. You know, like I said, we had 13 sites out there, and each site it's important to find the material, map out the precise locations, and once you get that physical work done, then you need to start looking at other things, water quality, the uh, growth on the reef itself, and the different kinds of fish that are coming in, and I really couldn't do it myself. So you train these guys and, and... Yeah, I work with them. They've got a couple other scientists that are actually a part of the team that help to do the training classes as well. Okay, well, we, uh, are we about ready to, to finish the trip out there? You bet. Okay, well, why don't we uh, pick up the speed and uh, let's head out. Shortly. All right. I'll tell you how cold it is too. <laughs> I know how.
Okay, what are we going to do first when we get down to the bottom? Well, we've got a, quite a task list ahead of us today. We'll start out and uh, we'll use a quadrat to uh, look at some of the plants and animals growing on the reef and we'll take a look at some other uh, animals that we find commonly. And uh, How deep are we right now? I didn't look at my gauge yet. Well, we're going down the line and the depth of the reef is 32 feet at the bottom. Okay. Now you said something, Steve, about quadrats. What do you... Uh, what do you measure? Are you measuring something? Or? Yeah, well, it's, it's a fancy word for a real simple device. You can see I've got in my hand this uh, frame, and that uh, is a standard area. We can put that on the reef and basically count the plants and animals inside of that frame as a way to measure what's growing there. You do this so you get some idea of what, how fast plant animals are, are colonizing onto this reef? Yeah, exactly. There's going to be a succession. You know, if you hold this here, uh, we'll take a look at this spot and okay. I can basically get in and uh, got a checklist that I can use. We'll count not so much individual animals, but the percent cover within this square and that'll give us a measure. We can't count every inch on this reef, so we do some random samples and we use that to kind of measure the, the overall reef. Yeah, extrapolate from that right, as exactly. to what you think it is. How many different species of uh, organisms are on here right now? Do you have any idea? Oh, well, at this point, it'd be hard to tell. We don't key everything out to species um, just because the expertise that's necessary to get into these real small uh, invertebrates is really a special area. Mm -hmm. But uh, we'll look at percent coverage, and at this point, uh, it's pretty new material. So you can see there's a lot of barnacles down underneath, and then uh, you'll start to have other animals grow and attach to them and build up. They compete for space. And uh, you know the whole thing over three years, they'll be fighting with each other and kind of evolving. Frank, are you have you been to this reef before? Yes, uh, the uh, VSR team has dove this reef uh, approximately half a dozen times, and in the time we're monitoring the uh, growth, as you can see, some of the um, culverts are pretty bare, and others mm. have some growth on them. Yeah, there's not much on there. How long has this material been in the water here? Approximately six months now. Okay, and eventually it'll it'll get, I assume, quite a bit uh, more growth on it, huh? Yeah, so the longer it stays down, the more productive the reef gets. Uh, more growth, more colors, more fish. Mm. And what kind of material is this? These are old uh, sewer pipes or something? Or? Yeah, these concrete structures that are donated by uh, various companies in town. You know, on this site there's uh, junction boxes and box culverts, precast manholes and things like that. The concrete holds up really well. Um, it's got a long life uh, lifespan and uh, it's excellent material for all the things that attach to it. Yeah, well there's a few things attached to it there now that I see. Uh, looks like it's, uh, I, can't, I can't make out what many of those things are. They're a little too small for me. Yeah, there are some point in time. hydrozoans in there. That's one of the problems uh, in this area. The limited visibility really complicates our job. Okay. Now, are we going to take another sample up here on, on the top of this box? Yeah, we'll look at another spot. Uh, like I said, we do several random samples, and that way we can get an overall picture of what's growing on the reef. Um, this is at the top of a junction box here, and because the light is coming directly down, um, the algae tends to outcompete some of the animals that grow on there. And so if you'll hold that for me, um, okay. we'll get in here again and we can look at the percent cover. Um, we'll use all of these samples. We'll kind of uh, put the data together as our overall picture because depending on wh where you are on the reef, it's going to have different things growing on it, obviously. Frank, do you do these uh, samples as well? Do you guys come out here and take these? Yes, we do. If we're not working with uh, Steve, we're out there on our own, uh, training the divers how to do this first, and then we go out and do the assessments on our own using the same uh, materials and uh, equipment that the scientists are using. Yeah. Oh, it looks, looks kind of neat down here. I see, uh, looks like a lot of different kinds of algae in there and um, yeah, there some are, barnacles. Yeah, the uh, bushier things that look like plants coming up there are actually hydrozoans and uh, we won't, like I said, get into determining exactly which species, you know, at this point, but uh, this, you know, variety is really tremendous. Will you eventually maybe take some of these samples back to the lab, try and identify them, you think? Yeah, we will, and we'll do that as part of the training. Um, we'll take select samples. I don't really like to go out there and scrape all of this material off, obviously, but when we need to... <laughs> yeah, it's there to it's there yeah. grow. You're going to come take it off. <laughs> when we need to, we'll take a, a representative sample back that we can use for demonstration, identify, and, and train people how to pick that out and tell what it is. Yeah. Now, Frank, you know, I noticed one thing. There's not, not a whole lot of fish. There's some there. What are those? Do you know? 
Uh, they look like a uh, small grunt. Okay. But there's not as many fish on this reef as I thought. Is that just because it's too new? Um, yes. Uh, the, the reef is basically a um, small animal reef at this point. It's uh, a hideaway, if you will. Uh, it's, it's not quite a producer as well as a reef that would be more established is. So you find a smaller species of fish, and that goes with your uh, lack of growth on the uh, culverts and junction box. There's something bigger there. What's that? That's a sheephead. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. And, uh, Steve, Here. what's that? Well, you mm -hmm. can see a couple things in there where those uh, shells are. If you look closely underneath, there's a sea urchin there. That's a purple urchin. And what's that black the, thing uh, there? The black thing is actually a tunicate, and that's one of the... Uh, dominant organisms that you find. They filter the water to collect their food and uh, just stay attached in that spot their uh, entire life there. Okay, and that's just, uh, that stuff just is growing, is a tunicate growing on the side of that? Yeah, it'll attach right to the concrete itself and uh, they'll just depend on the currents basically to bring the food to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's one of those big culverts. But there's something inside there, what is that? Uh, well, I can't see it in there. Somebody yeah, we'll pull this out of here. And this is an example of some of the other larger organisms that we find on here, and you can tell us what it is. Yeah, let me have it here. What is that? Looks like it looks like a big pickle, but I know it's a, <laughs> it's a sea cucumber. I was close. <laughs> that's uh, right, and not that's an invertebrate, though. It's not it's not a, a plant. It's an animal. It doesn't look like much of an animal, but it is. What are those things? They uh, they feed on the algae on the culverts and stuff. Well, though, actually, you noticed he was down in the bottom where we tend to have a little bit of sand and silt collecting there, and they'll actually. Uh, plow along and ingest all of that mud and uh, everything that's in it. They'll, I don't mean to interrupt you, Steve, but we're down to 500 psi in our tanks. Why don't we go back to the surface, change some tanks, and we'll take you to uh, another reef site. Okay, that sounds good. What is that, a pie plate? <laughs> that's a secchi disc. Uh, I, what it is is a, uh, obviously a disc that's painted black and white, and it's used to measure visibility. It's attached to the end of a measuring tape, tape measure, and uh, what we have is Tom's taking the secchi disc out of our view, basically. Uh, when the disc disappears, we stop the uh, tape measure, and we'll have a measured visibility underwater, as opposed to a estimated visibility. It gives us a more exact record of how far we're seeing. Is that important to uh, to know that? I mean, does it make a difference to the marine life down there? Or it does. It uh, has an effect on, obviously, your sunlight penetration and uh, the life uh, and the sediment in the water. It looked like, before you started to roll it up, I saw, what, about 17 feet there? 17 and a half feet. So okay. uh, we'll write this down on our slides. Is that pretty good or not? That's uh, about par for the course in this area. It hangs around 20. Uh, 20 foot visibility. That's about the best you get, huh? Yes. Yeah. You know, I noticed in, in swimming around here now, uh, amazing diversity in the size of the materials. You got big culverts, little ones, mm -hmm. square boxes, bundles of stuff. Steve, what's the the purpose of having different sizes down there, or, or is there any? Well, yeah, it's nice because obviously the one of the reasons a fish come to the reef is because they want shelter and a small culvert will accommodate smaller fish, larger ones, uh, you know, large fish and uh, you know, we get a variety of things donated to us and so we'll just try to you know, put them together and bundle them up and uh, use them as, uh, as, as our best you know, available substrate that we can make out of them. Yeah, there's no formula, you know, there's no correct or incorrect size. I mean this this one here that I'm, I'm looking in is uh, fairly narrow. I don't I think I can get my head in there much further than this, but it's pretty in there. Look at that. That's tough. 
Yeah, but there's really not any uh, right or wrong. Uh, we found that if you pile them up higher, you do get more fish on the reef, though. Yeah, look at the colors there, though. Wow, it's really neat. Look at those black, uh, whippy looking yeah, things. Right there. There. Yeah, they're right there. Yeah, on the right. Wh whip is the right word. That's a sea whip, it's a soft coral. Um, one of the things that we've added on the, over the course of the year comparing to that material we just dove on. And some of the culverts obviously are so big some people can fit through them. Yeah. <laughs> well, we try to have a little fun while we're down there doing this research. And well it's fun unless there's some big fish waiting in there. Let's see, <laughs> is he going to make it out or not? Yes. Yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, no big fish in there at least. That it's hungry Jew fish wasn't time. there this yes. time. <laughs> Do they like to lurk in those uh, in those big culverts like that? This is a popular spot for a uh, large jewfish, and off the distance you saw a gray angelfish yeah, so as uh, well. Yeah, you know I notice in, in swimming around here too, there's a lot more life on these culverts than the ones we were at before. A lot, lot more life, and also a lot more color too. A lot of oranges and reds. It's really pretty. Yeah, you can see it there. This material is one year older than uh, those junction boxes, and over that time, you know, a lot more organisms will come in and make their home on the reef. There's something there. I wonder what that is. What is, oh, there's a, is that an angelfish? Yeah, that's a uh, blue angel going off there. And look back in, there's a stone crab hiding. Oh, in yeah, there. you just barely see them there. Huh. Belted sandfish swimming through there as well. They like those uh, small areas they hey, can look hide. At that one. Hey, that's a new one. There, oh, there's yeah? squirrel fish in there. It's, uh, we keep track, you know, as we come out here. We'll write down the different kinds of fish we see, and that's the first time we've seen them out here on this reef. How many species of fish have you found I think so that's far? number 50. Yeah. Uh-oh, Frank, they're lining up to take a look at you. Look well, at that. That's it. They're, do, they're doing their own little survey of us. They're, Those are grunts, huh? Yep, grunts ha hanging out, uh, make, yeah. making our job of fish counting easy in this case. So. Yeah, really, they come right up to you. Have you ever tried to feed them? Uh, no, we haven't. Yeah. No, well, we uh, basically let them uh, swim on their own as we uh, do our surveys. Yeah. Whoa, yeah. there's a big uh, yeah. hermit look crab. At that. That's a big one. Man. How big is that shell? Huh? Uh, it's about a foot across, I'd say. Yeah, you guys, that's actually a, a giant hermit crab is the species there, uh, appropriately named in this case. Yeah. Huh, I wonder how old something like that is. Uh oh, wait a second. Dinner. Yeah. I recognize <laughs> dinner. I like, I like grouper, too. <laughs> yeah, red grouper there, and uh, he's come onto this mature uh, reef. There's plenty of food around. And yeah. There's some more dinner, too. Stuffed flounder. Yeah. It's not stuffed yet, though. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess the bigger fish will come to these uh, reefs where there's more material, right? right. Well, as the, as the reef community matures, then, you know, they'll find a place to hide, and they'll also have uh, food available. And there he goes, finally. Yeah. yeah, so they won't come around. That is a good-sized flounder. I wonder mm -hmm. how big that one is. Any ideas? Ooh. Two, big enough pounds? to eat. Huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah, obviously. <laughs> yeah. But look, when it stops, you can't even see it. I guess that's why it wouldn't move before. And he feels pretty secure there with his coloration. He'll blend right into the bottom. Yeah. Well, there's some more. A lot of food fish around here. I guess this is a this is where people will come to go fishing now. I take it. Yeah, it's real popular. It's a nice mangrove snapper in there, taking advantage of that stacked culvert. It makes a nice hiding place for him in there. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's really pretty down here. Boy, I'm enjoying this. How are we going to get back to work though? Huh? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, we're going to take a look with our quadrat again, and you'll be able to see here. You know, comparison. Quite a bit more, yeah. What's yeah. The stuff there on the right. On the right, that's a hydrozoan we've got growing in there. Um, if you get down in and look there, we'll find a lot of different uh, animals um, that grow in there. We don't find as much of the red algae, but uh, there are soft corals starting to come in. There are actually a few really solitary hard corals we'll find in there as well. It's a lot like the tropics, isn't it? Or in some respects, you don't have the big coral reefs, but somewhat like it. Yeah, you do have some similar yeah. growth. Okay, Frank, what are you guys doing now? Well, we're back to work over here uh, mapping out the reef. And what we're doing is we have our dive buddies together and on our underwater slates that also have a grip pattern on them using compasses. We are uh, mapping out the culverts, their location, size, distance from each other, which direction they're lying. And we're trying to give uh, an idea to uh, everyone how the reef is lying in which direction. And after we're done writing down on the slates, the dive buddies get together and put together an actual map uh, of the entire reef system. Oh, and then you give that stuff to the county, huh, so they know. I guess they don't really uh, pay too much attention to what uh, the stuff or how it falls into the water. They can't control that too much. So sometimes they can't. Uh, the importance of a map is uh, actually to see how the reef is shifting in uh, poor weather. Uh, let's the say a hurricane moving around. around. Sometimes it does. Sometimes huh. the bundles break. 
it adds a different um, superstructure, if you will, to the reef system. So we're trying to keep track of that as well as the marine life. Yeah, and sometimes you just sort of swim around and look to see what you can find, I guess. Yeah, we, we assess the reefs, the overall health of the reefs, and unfortunately sometimes we have to clean the reefs. And here we have to get this piece of monofilament line out of the uh, middle of the reef so it doesn't injure another animal. Try to remove it uh, as quickly and safely as possible, put it in our pocket, and um, make sure that it makes its way safely back on a boat. And again, unfortunately, we found an abandoned trap that uh, can become a potential fish uh, hazard. Yeah, fish can get in there and they can't get out, unfortunately. Right. It's a pretty big trap, so uh, why don't we just go up and uh, get this back. Okay. Hey guy, how you doing? Hey, good, how about you? All right, nice good. to see you. Nice seeing you again. Yeah, it was fun later. today uh, out there in those reefs. Oh, good, you had really a good time. Yeah, yeah, a lot of color. Yeah, the, uh, a lot, lot more than I expected. The, the culverts right, do sir. show a lot of cover, color for uh, the year that they've been well, down. Yeah. What, uh, what's going on here tonight at this meeting? Well, tonight's, yeah, tonight's our monthly meeting, and basically what we do is we set up our training and our diving events for the month. Um, we, we have sign-up sheets. Uh, our scientists get together and they, they do the training methods, have the people sign up for the training, the location of the training, and basically we put together our month ahead, training in both uh, activities. What kind of training stuff do you do here? Well, basically what we're trying to do is get uh, the full membership involved in the scientific research. So this month, the month of February, uh, we have a methods class set up which will teach the divers how to use psyche discs, water quality, um, the, the different water the stuff that we did today right exactly yeah. and then uh, on Saturday we'll have uh, our scientists will come in and talk about dolphins and how they work and everything you want to know about a dolphin that leads us to fish identification class so we can go out and actually identify the fish species and the density amounts on the reef how many Basically, people are members of VSR now it looks like uh, what, 50 more? Well, we usually have a membership of about 50 to 90 show up at the meetings, but on paper our membership is better than 200, about 210, 211 officially on paper. Out of that we have an active membership of about 160 people that actually get involved in all the monthly events. You meet here every month at the, at the Marine Center here? Yes, we, we meet here uh, every month and then we try to move it around the county to try to accommodate all of the other memberships so that one person isn't driving the long distance every time. So we try to try to move it around a little bit, make it a com accommodations uh, for the membership. Yeah. You do any uh, like educational programs or or have projects for like the public to see? Do you have any like anything set up here? Yes, we do. We have a uh, tank, about 175 gallon fish tank, aquarium uh, that represents the water. Is it over here? Uh, yes, it's Let's right go over take here. Take a look. And it shows. Uh, a representation of the culvert. Wait a second, hold it. What's this? I recognize. <laughs> I think I recognize that. Is this you where might. we were today? This is where you were today. Ah. Uh, what you did is you went down a line right here in this position of the of the culverts, and we swam around and did surveys in this section of, of the culverts. This is our our objective on the first dive on these artificial reefs, is to do a general survey and a mapping of the reef, so that we not only know that the reef exists. But we also know the structure, the uh, location of the structure, as well as a, a relationship of how it's placed. And uh, some of this material was, has not been down as long as, as other stuff, right? Yes, correct. Yeah, because I noticed some of it did not have as nearly as much growth on yes. it. Yes, this map represents the culverts, uh, which have been placed approximately a year and a half ago. This is where we, we are now seeing a lot of life, a lot of growth, um, a lot more to see on the culverts. The other reef is the junction boxes. They've only been down for about six months, so they're, they're still fairly bare cement and there's not as much marine life hanging around. And all of this is done from when you were underwater with uh, taking the compass readings and, and trying yes. to, to map all that Ser out? Huh? Series of dive teams go down with underwater slates, as we were doing. Uh, they take compass headings, as you can see on the brown lines, and off those compass headings will take directions on the culverts and distances of the culverts. These represent culvert bundles, these represent single culverts. 
And as you saw, there are some large culverts down here that you could actually swim through. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there's some small ones. Yeah, it's all different sizes, but, yes. uh, but nice stuff. That for Wednesday night, it'll start at 6 and be over right around 7.30. It's not going to be anywhere near as long as the estuary training that you have first. So it ought to be a fairly quick class. And the methods class Frank, will be can I talk you back here for a minute? Sure. <laughs> some of the different um, sampling Get away from her so we're not uh, making too much noise. Like, uh, uh, quite a, quite a we'll aggressive program you got. You got a good group here, too. It looks like they, they weren't too thrilled about going How diving in uh, Lake Louise, it didn't sound like. Uh, the Hopefully, low and no visibility we'll dives aren't our favorite, at, but uh, once we get out there, we have a good time. The research gets done. Everybody comes out of the water with a sense of accomplishment, and I think that's what keeps it going. Is that work being done for Lee County, like the reef work that we did today? No, that work will be done. The bulk of the work will go to the City of Cape Coral Environmental Sciences Division. Who else do you do work for then? In the oh, our information is being forwarded to the State Department of Natural That'll Resources, uh, Lee County Marine class. Sciences, the City I'll of Cape Coral, as well as other organizations and, and private uh, organizations in town. For example, who places the, uh, the reefs, our information goes back to them, let them know the progress of the reef is. Hmm. Is VSR a, um, a unique concept? I mean, is there anybody else in the country doing this, or did you guys dream this up on your own? No, it's, it's, it's not unique. Uh, I'm sure there's more organizations nationwide that are doing the same. I think we're unique in the fact that we're not only taking the diving concept, but we're taking and moving it into estuaries and canals and lakes, so we're adapting it to our general area. So that the concept isn't unique, uh, recreational folks helping out scientists and getting information out of it. It's just the way we're applying it to the local area that's unique. What do you think the future holds for, for you and VSR? For me, I'd like to see the, the team grow, uh, become more successful, um, and just keep professionally organizing events and getting the information centered and given to the proper authorities or scientists that can use the information. The whole focus of the team is to get the information, get it accumulated, present it in a way that scientists can use it, and then have the scientists use it. Yeah. Well, tell you what, we're about out of time today. I want to thank you, though. This is a, a tremendous program, I think, and I really enjoyed myself today. It's always fun to get in the water and, and look around, and uh, we'll probably check back with you again sometime and see what kind of progress you're making. Good. Sounds good. I had a pleasure diving with you. Okay, thanks. Take care. That's all the time we have this week on Exploring Florida. I hope you enjoyed the show. I'm going to stick around and watch the rest of the meeting. We'll see you later. Portions of the production costs for exploring Florida have been provided by the Lely Development Corporation. Environmentally sensitive neighbors in Southwest Florida's building industry since 1964, Lely is proud to bring Exploring Florida to public television.